Well everyone, um, I'm now um, doing the second part of this video on how to design a CD. Basically I've gone and designed the rest um, because I wasn't able to do a video at the time. So I've designed it, so I'll just, but I need to finalise it, so I'll just go through what I did. Um, it would have been a good idea if you're watching this to watch the first part first, but if not, you know, you still get the idea. Um, so basically, um, let's look at the tray card first. So I've got the um, the graphics parts of them in Photoshop. So I think this is pretty much done. Um, I mean, to be fair, on this I'm looking at it and it's like I'm not 100% happy with the hair. But the thing is, that these photographs that are provided are really poor quality to start off with. There's always so much I can do um, with poor quality photographs. So it's I think. I think the job's quite decent for now. Yeah, so I think I think that one's actually done. Um, so I'll just close that. So basically now, um, you know what? Why is so application frame store? Why is that? Uh, I'll keep ranting on about this, but I've, I've reinstalled Photoshop on this new user and. On my other account, so you don't get a black background. I like to, I like to see the desktop through it, and I forgot to turn it off. What is it? Is it in preferences or preferences? <laughs> preferences interface. Uh, where is it? I haven't got that on auto show the home screen. I'm taking that off. But I do like a transparent background so you can actually see through. I forgot on what the setting is. I think I've just sorted out out in Illustrator, yeah, because in Illustrator it's called an um, application frame, yeah. So if you turn that on, that turns it black. It would be really useful if Photoshop and Illustrator unified settings, and it's uh, be a lot less confusing. Um, so anyway, so basically what I'm going to do next is I'll set up a new tab. Go into the card. Does CD? I've got AI designs there. So what is it? The tray card. And it's the outer tray card. Just open that. Could not find the linked file again. I think I've been messing around with something. Um, 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 um. PSD tray card. I haven't actually got down to the bottom right. It keeps doing it on one particular file, then all the rest seem to update. There we go. Let's close that. Alright, so the file. What the heck? Right then, so that PSD file is in the layer um, art outer. So this, this what you can see, is actually the PSD. It's not even a, a TIFF, it's just a, the linked PSD file. So basically what I'm doing now is I'm actually compiling the, um, the final files. So let me just overlay this. I just want to like, check on things to make sure things... I'm going to the vectors. Why am I using my mouse? Right. Let me just get these two. I'm just going to make sure they're even more perfectly centered. Same with these two. I mean, there's only so much you can do when um, you're centering things. If you look at the, the guidelines that the company sent here, I mean, these lines here are like one point or something thick. So I think, you know, as long as you get it between the guides that they would specify, generally, you're okay. Um, I can't remember if I converted these here, converted those to, uh, to pass. Let's have a look at this. Um, record and mix to max down. Da, da, da. So under this, right, so under this, I've got, I've got white text on it. I've underlaid it with black text and put a slight black stroke on. So it's not clashing with the actual text. Uh, 
Right. So, what I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate this, um, this vector there. This is what I normally do, put vectors, paths. And I'm going to select all the text, go to type, create outlines, um, and then lock the layer again. And then, uh, don't know what's that about. There's, um, so yeah, saving to legacy format. I think that's because it's um, the template that I'm using is quite an old one from an earlier um, setup, and I'm using the latest version of um, Adobe Illustrator. Right then. So I think that's pretty much done. Everything centered, the text has been approved down here and on the top. I'm just going to save that. So, what the next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm pretty much happy with that. I'm going, to, um, I'm going to save as I'm just thinking. I've been doing a lot of exporting lately in Photoshop, <laughs> that's why I went to that menu. Um, I'm trying to think AI designs. Well, all my designs are, end up are going to be. I'm trying to think of the file structure. Uh, should I just do a, a file that says finals or save them actually in? I think actually for now. No. No, I will do. In AI designs, I'm going to create a, um, a, a file named finals. I'm going to put a space first so it puts it at the top. So I'll put finals in. If you look here, I've got one space. So I press create and it goes to the top. Um, and then I'm going to save this as a PDF. Um, that's all. So I'll save it as a PDF 2018. That's all that will, uh, the compression. Yeah, these are set to high, which is what you want. Uh, marks and bleeds. Um, trim marks, yeah, I'll have those kept on. I uh, don't particularly need, I don't think for this print I need all the rest of the stuff. Although, I'm interested to see whereabouts it will put the, put the, uh, oh, it doesn't show your preview. I just, te I just tend to have the, um, if it's just going to a local printer, just having the actual uh, trim marks on, I think that's quite helpful. That's about it. Uh, right then. Let's have a look. Output. Let's use all the default settings. No security required. I think that's okay. It's going to save a PDF. Shut up. Okay. Now, this here, if you get a warning like this, it says the document saved without P PDF X. Com um, Compliancy because the required font could not be embedded. It doesn't really matter. The required font is probably this one down here, if you can see, highlighted in uh, like a pink color. That's part of the actual uh, template. My design doesn't matter about fonts not being compatible because they're all um, saved as outlines, as you see. So all this text is not actually text, it's uh, outline text. So I'll just press OK for that. I mean, if you're sending files off, um, you know, if, if hundreds of thousands of copies were going to be sent and it's uh, maybe, uh, you know, a well-known band, you know, what's in the charts, you'd probably want to cross all the I's and dot all the T's. Wait a minute, a little way around. <laughs> I make sure everything's perfect, but for this CD, it, I don't think it really matters too much about things like that. Um, so anyway, finals. So that is the, uh, let's have a look how big is it. Only 560. So if you see in this file, I you know th this was a PSD, a Photoshop document behind it, as the image, and when it saves though, it just it compresses it so it's a high quality JPEG in the background. I mean, some would argue that you want to use TIFF, but I think high quality JPEGs are perfectly f sound for um for things like this. So so you see 
when I've saved it, the, the Photoshop file has um, automatically compressed the Photoshop file to a high quality JPEG and this entire file is now uh, only 568 kilobytes which is like just short of uh, 0.6 megabytes so that's a really small file but still high quality and vectorized um, text and vector text on top of the artwork as well so um, I think I'll keep that as it is let me look at the, uh, the inner so since last time wait a minute, this one so this is the uh, the inside of the um, of the design. Um, and one thing I haven't done yet is so this is what I designed last time when I didn't uh, in between part one and part two. I've uh, I've gone and designed this. I've just pretty much taken these uh, these symbols. You can see the vector symbols and uh, what's that? Oh yeah, that's, that's just the artwork. Uh, so I wonder if you can see all the uh, underlying text for the uh, actual um, what do you call it template so I've just put these in provisionally for now these these symbols but um, I would like to know actually if uh, so anyway I'm, I'm just thinking now so this is the inside of the tray card so when you have a CD design and you have a clear um, jewel case sort of thing. Um, this would show through the line. So it show through from the outside. And I'm just thinking now, should I just print this off 100% like to make sure I'm printing one of my own CD cases just to make sure. Um, Oh great, so I'll just pick them up and it's probably one of the few ones I've got that's actually black, not clear. I've got one here. Hmm. I'm just thinking, where's the line? Oh dear me. My uh, Wacom tablet driver keeps, uh, keeps crashing. Tablet alias. This tablet is literally from, you know, it's probably about 18 years old. It's a miracle that it, uh, it still works, but sometimes it crashes and I have to reboot it. Um, reboot the driver. Yeah, so I think I will actually. I'm just going to pause the video here just so I can print it out. In fact, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Uh, I think I will just um, turn that off and print this off. So I'm just going to pause the recording just while I print it off. In fact, I'll show what I'm going to do. So pretty much I've done that with it. Just I just want to look at this alignment when I put it in a in a CD case and make sure it says scaling. Do not scale, and then print. Rightio, I've just uh, what the heck done that. I've just taken a picture. Uh, blah blah blah. Just a second. All right, let's take a picture of this. Um, just trying to airdrop this. Here we go. Oh dear me! Is that my uh, whack on things just gone crazy again? Where's that gone? Right. So you can see here, um, is it counterclockwise? Yeah, you can see here, um, these are, as I suspected, way too far to the left. I mean, you can see here on the template, there's a grey bar that goes from there to there. I thought, you know, before I actually looked at the grey bar, when it's I thought you know that would that would do being right up to the left, uh, but I can see it does need centering actually uh, in between the grey bar. Now so that's why I printed it off just to double check. You can see it's right over. I mean, you could actually keep it there, right up to the left, but um, 
that bit is actually thicker than what you actually think, or that, what I actually thought, until you actually get a CD out. That's why it's a good idea. Ugh, my dog's scratching the door to come. Come on. It's alright, Dashi. Hmm? It's warm. There's a Springer Spaniel. And it's slightly crazy. Hey, Dashi. So, anyway. Um, yeah, so what I'll do is. Uh, where's my artwork on this layer? No? Yep. Let's call this artwork. So, I'm going to get this. I'm going to move it over. Just round about and centre. Okay, that's fine. Cool. Take those template guides off. Put that back on. Ah, I wonder where my uh, trim marks went. It seems that my artwork. I've got a white background on it. Yeah. That said, though, I don't actually need the yeah, artwork like that. I can simply. Uh, wait a second, let me relaunch my uh, tablet. So I need a pen. Back on the tablet driver. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's get that off. Let's go here. So, get the eyedropper. Eyedrop that. I'm actually going to turn that off. Um, create a new layer. And I'm just going to fill that in the colour because it's blocking off all my uh, template items. Stick that to about there. There we go. So I think go to artwork. You know, I know that's going to be chopped off. It's one of those things, these graphics, it doesn't matter if it's slightly squashed or. This out on the other because it's uh that said, wait a second. Yeah, let me do it in proportion. I'll do it in proportion. And I think that'll still be okay. Um is that like center centered? So look, yeah, it's pretty much uh, okay. Right, so I think that I didn't realise I grid lines. Uh I think this so a quick look is okay. So that's in vectors, that's underneath with no other text on. Let me just turn that off. So that's the inside. Um, the tray card. I'm happy with all this spacing sort of thing. Yep. Save it and then go to save as. Uh, go into finals. Inside. Adobe PDF. I want it on this uh, 2018 where you can see the compression is automatic, image quality high. Now, these settings should be perfect for what I need. And this file size, especially, should be quite small. Let's have a look. Finals, uh, tray card, inner. I mean, 114 kilobytes. That's like, you know. Just over a tenth of a megabyte. So I'll create a new file and call these tray card two files. I'm just going to stick them there for the printers. So next up, let me just, I uh, don't need this anymore, let's close that down. Let's close this down, don't save it. Yeah, well, that's really bugging me. I can't remember what setting it was. Uh, it's not on general. Workspace. So enable floating document window document. Ah, 
I do normally have things at tabs, but I haven't got the black background on. No, I'm not going to waste my entire video looking into this issue. <laughs> so, right then, uh, on to here again. So, let me go on to the first one first. And explain what I've done, actually, because since my last video, I haven't uh, actually explained the front cover. So the front cover design, uh, there was some kind of DNA thing going on. So this is the, uh, the illustrated version, so you can see I've got vectors here for the text and that kind of thing. And the uh, background is done in, in, in Photoshop. Let's go into my Photoshop tab. Um, let's go into the booklet. So pages um, 8 and 1. And I'll just quickly show you what I did for the cover. So this is Photoshop. As you can see, there's no there's no text on here. That's done in Adobe Illustrator. And basically, I had like a, a base image, and I just pretty much built it up. Um, so I'll take these layers off. So I was using um, Alpha Channels. I'm a big fan of Alpha Channels. So this was like the original image that I chose to use. I then did a from that image, I did um, I used uh, levels to create a really stark, uh, more black and white, so I've got jet black here going into perfect white down here. And then from this alpha channel I built up different colours, so a purple, then I overlaid orange, you can see I used layer masks, and then some yellow. So I pretty much utilised all the colours that I used actually in the artwork to create a really good looking, um, i put some blue on after, so if you look at that blue, um, on its own. I'll take that blue off. Uh, where am I? You can see, um, you know, that that is just the blue, and everything else, you know, builds up underneath that blue sort of thing, and it builds up the entire file. So pretty good. Um, if you want to go back to the original file, uh, if you go to history, just go to the you know the actual where it was, and then on top of that blue I've overlaid some black on top and then it makes this black you know is a perfect black then to put the uh, actual um, but you know the logo for the undiscovered band on so anyway so I pretty much did that and um, as you know so this is page eight eight one so when you have a booklet this one here is page eight this is the final one coupled with page one that's the first one I'm not going to say this so then when you actually um, go into Adobe Illustrator. Um, that's one reason why I don't like this black background in Photoshop. In fact, I'm going to pause this video. I know it's uncut, but that it's uncut in regards to design. You know, when I go to the toilet or make a coffee, I'm not going to leave it running. You see, it. the design parts are uncut. Apart from the uh, the fact that I've gone and designed the cover, we have to record it. But you know, let me just pause this a second. So I just looked into it for a couple of minutes, and the application frame is there. It's under um, window. No, I'm in Illustrator. Right then, <laughs> in Illustrator, see application frame is at the top. So go into Photoshop, and apparently application frame is at the bottom, and that's why. You see, it's been so so many years since I've uh, installed reinstalled Photoshop as a new user, and it's uh, thrown me. So finally, that's how I take it off. Okay, I've nearly got Photoshop set up the way I like it now. So anyway, back into um, back into Illustrator. So in Illustrator now, I've got you know page one on the uh, on the right with the with the cover, and that is the back page um, of the um, of the booklet. Right. So I'm just finalising this now. I've just seen. So. I do want actually, you know, I want these on for the printers. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go into the files in Photoshop again. Let's open this. Okay, I want this white background off. There we go. So all I'm going to do is, uh, so just open the file up. I've, I've turned off this white background. Just saving it, now it's uh, for some reason hanging on 99%. Let's close this. Let's go back into Illustrator. You see some of the files I'm missing are modified. So this is now going to auto-update. So now this uh, file 
this file here is uh, auto updated. Knocked off the white background, and now I can see the actual um, um, all the crop marks and so forth. So I just want to ch check over these vectors um, while I'm finalising this. So I'm just pressing. Uh, I'm on Mac, so I'm uh, just using um, Command Y. I just want to look at see if these uh, vectors are looking okay. Nothing hidden. Uh, that's okay. Right, that's looking fine. I just want to check over this text. I mean, I've sent the proofs off uh, to the band and they've proofread them and they say everything's oh, looking good on their end. So I think that's looking okay. So what I want to do is make sure these are off. <laughs> Starters, the template guides before saving the actual uh, final thing. Uh, let me just I'll check the alignment on this. Mm. Now I want, I want to see what's off on there. Um, Right. right. My alignment here, I'm not sure if that's in Photoshop or on Photoshop side or if I have not placed them properly. I think it's too far to the right. So I'm going to go here onto this one. I'm just going to select this PSD file. And I'm going to nudge it over. So it's going up central. And that's still within the bounds, so I think that's okay. I'm, I'm just looking at this, uh, you know, this is quite critical actually because this is the point where it folds. Um, to be part of the booklet, so this part, more than anything else, needs to be bang on. Uh, have I got any kind of guy set there? No, one second. So I want that guy set up there, and I want this, I'm just going to nudge it over, so it's bang on perfect. As long as it's not coming out of that blue line, which it's not, uh, nothing else is affected by that nudge at all, so I say that is pretty cool. I think that has finalised the front cover. Oops. Uh, let me just check what's going on here. What the heck? What can I help you with? Nothing. Dear me. I've been watching things on my iPad and it's paused the, uh, the video sometimes. So can, I, can I help you? And it's like triggered it or doing something. That looks fine. Right, that's off. Everything else is done. What I'm going to do now is a final step because um, oops, I thought I just moved the text. Then I don't think I have. One second, no, I've got my text. You see, lined up on this uh, on this top line, ish. I don't I don't think I moved it. So look. Yeah, I pretty much lined it up so it's. Where's smart guards guides gone? I lined it up by eye rather than going, you know, in. So make sure it's not lined up as in this line is at the top of the text. I lined it up pretty much when I'm just using it at hundred percent, and I've like, you know, done it. I think they're all the same like that, where the uh, the top of the letters are just peeping over. I think that's fine. Turn that off. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to duplicate this vectors, that last one. I need to turn that vectors off. I need to call this vectors um, paths. Oh, I don't know why I did the last file. I was thinking now. In the tray. Oh, wrong one. Uh, in the tray. 
just want to make sure that I turn that over there off when I put those paths. Yeah, I'm just checking the <laughs> vectors paths. I was checking that I didn't leave this one on by accident. I don't, I don't want to double up the vectors just in case something peeps out. Um, don't save. Anyway, that's what I sudden thought there. Right then, so I've got vectors paths. So pretty much now I'm going to select all this. You can see here, um, these are it's edit, editable type at the moment. Just go down, uh, create outlines. Just make sure there's no problems that printers don't need these on. Right, so. right then, vectors paths. So there. Never send your, your file off to printers for something like unless it's a book or something. But I'm talking about something with limited amount of text to the printers without converting it to paths. I'm talking about graphic things, not not things like books. But just if it's a CD cover, always. There's no reason not to um, to convert things to paths. You're not going to, you know, have any issues with the with the printers not having um, the same fonts that kind of thing. So anyway, that's looking okay. I'm happy with that. I've just saved it in the background. Uh, now I'm going to go to save as. I'm going to finals. I'm going to keep this uh, file name the same. Go to Adobe PDF. I'm going to save it as a, a 2018. Yep. So I reckon that should um, that should save at roughly um, about one and a half meg at most. I think. So one point one meg. Very good. It's good to have file size as small as possible because I'll be emailing these across. So, right. so I'm happy with that. Close that down. So what I want to do now, I want to actually take. I'm just going to PSD designs. Oops, I got the own tab for that. Uh, go into the CD booklet. So I've done pages one, um, eight and one. So let me just uh, open all these three at once. I'm just going to give them a good look over. So I've got this one. So like the other ones, I want to take the white background off. See, it's transparent now. Everything there is looking okay. So I'm just saving that. Command S and Command W. Turn this white background off. Command S to save, then Command W. Close it and here turn the white background off. S and W, and that's done. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to my uh, Illustrator files, look into the booklet. I've done pages 8 and 1, so let's open uh, these three here. You okay, Dash? Yeah? My dog's making funny noises, and he's going to sleep. Right then. So, as far as I can see, everything's okay. Uh, so these, uh, as you can see, this is pages four and five. So when you have a a CD booklet, um, not not the gatefold ones that you know come out in like accordion style or whatever. These two pages will be the center ones. So page, so obviously page five. Follows direct, directly from page four, so that's why you know the songs are page uh, are, are songs four, five, six, and seven all in a row. So what I've done is um, these photographs I've pretty much placed them um, near as possible to where the songs have been written. So this one is my brother Darren, and um, I think there's only like one song written by him, which is the, which is the title of the CD "Real or Fake." Uh, so this was a good uh, time to put the image of Darren because it's a horizontal image and because this is a dual page and so it's, so it's folding out um, this was pretty much the only way that I could do it I have to chop the top of his head off although I'd be quite happy about that because it's not going to show his bald spot <laughs> so this is a good place to put it right across and you know what I've done I've just mixed up the colours so this, you know, we've got like the green, you know, mark, uh, make, you know, matching the green text on two of the uh, the titles for the the songs here. So I'm just looking, I'm just eyeballing this, looking at the placement of things. And I'm just quickly doing a last scan of all the texts. Now, um, this is a tip. I'm not sure if it's a tip or this is what I did. 
I mean, Darren even came back to me and said, this thing's changing, it's a mistake. But when I explained to him it's not a mistake, they came back and said, oh yes, leave it as it is. The thing is, with this, with CD design, you, you have to fit, fit if, they, if, if a band, if you're designed for a CD, and a band wants um, all their lyrics, you know, put it inside a little tiny, you know, 11 centimeter square page on a booklet, right? You have to fit it in all in somewhere, and, some, and sometimes compromises need to be made. So I'm just selecting this text. This text here, as you can see, it's seven point. That's highlighted there. So um, you have to make the text small. And I always use a font that's easily readable, so this one is Myriad Pro. Um, so anything that starts with a capital letter here, you should look all the way down, that's the beginning of um, a sentence uh, in the CD. So, you know, take a stroll on the Great Wall of China, that's the end of that one. So the next one is a new line, a new lyric line, which is Taj Mahal, could I find you? By the way, this is a good font to use, a good example here. Um, this is Myriad Pro, and it's got some good uh, ligatures, which means like this one, for example. You've got the F and the I, and that makes find. So rather than having a dot clash at the top of the F, as you can see, it, when you put an F and I together, it creates a ligature together. So it's pretty good, pretty nice font. So let's go back onto it. Um, so anyway, they were saying, oh, I need to adjust the lines because on, on, on two or three sections throughout the CD, I've actually got a gap, you know, from here. And I was explaining to them, when this happens, that's because this is all one line in the lyric. It is, with this particular one, channel tunnel, maybe there's a chance I went right through, uh, never set eyes on you. And this is one uh, line in the lyric. There's no other place where there's a capital letter because the capital letter starts at the beginning, just like all the other ones done. So if I put to this one the word went right over over here, one that will look like it's a new line in the lyrics when it's not, and two, you you then face with a different problem. So firstly I thought I've done this wrong because I've got a gap here. So the other problem on the other side is uh, because this is a continuation of a lyric line, there's no capital letter to go here. It's a it's a small case W. So then you get the problem of I could send these off. Say that this was like you know another client. They're saying, oh you've done a mistake. Uh, this line doesn't start with a capital letter. And then I would say well, yes because it's a continuation of of one of your lyrics. So you know you can't have it both ways. You you have a either have to indent it like I've done here, indent the line to show it's a continuation of the same sentence, or you can not indent it, make it look like it's another sentence, but decapitalize it. Either way, it's a trade-off and compromise. It's like, it depends who's reading the lyrics, what they think about it. If they're, you know, listening to the music and listen and, you know, then read this, it'll be obvious to them that it is a continuation of one line lyric. Um, but either way, you, you either have to, the only way around it, I suppose, is if it was all lowercase or all uppercase, or if you then capitalise this to make it look like, you know, as, you know, aesthetically, you know, make it look like it's a new sentence, even though it's not, uh, indent it, or not indent it and put a capital letter. Either of those three scenarios, this compromise we made, and I prefer to indent things. So what I do here is, there's no actual space there, I can't remember what I did, I think I went into uh, the paragraph settings, yeah that's it, and you see the here setting it's five points, so I've, in, I've indented it like five points inside, so that's the setting that I used. Anyway, so that's a little tip there, uh, so what I'm going to do is again, I'm just going to duplicate this, turn that one off, very important. I say very important as a matter of practice. I mean, I've got no transparency in here, but do that as a matter of practice because if you're designing a CD and I've got some transparency in that layer, and then you double it up and not turn it off, then say if something's set to 30%, it's then going to be doubled up and you have a transparency of 60%. So it's always uh, vital that you actually turn that off. And my graphics tablet has yet again crashed. I need to get a new tablet desperately. 
So tablet alias. Um, it's all been ha happening recently, man. The tablet being crushed. It's been a really good tablet. You know, whack them or wake them, whatever you call them, do make good tablets, and this has lasted uh, an awful long time, but uh, I think it is, I am due for another one, I think. Anyway, so let's go back here. So, vectors, paths. So, we'll select it all, go here, type, and create outlines. And the reason why I do keep the original is because. You know, if I if the band, even though these are finals, if they come back to me and pull print, oh no, we actually we've discovered a mistake, that kind of thing. I, I can always go back, delete, delete this layer, amend the vectors layer, you know, uh, with the normal text, and then resave the paths layer afterwards. So it all works out well. So a quick check here that things are looking good. Yep. Um, so these around the photographs are just you know filled. Uh, just shape layers filled with colour. Right, just save that. Right, and then go to File, um, Save As. Um, then I'm going to go to Finals, um, Adobe PDF, to 2018, Save PDF. Okay, so that one is now. Page four and five. That is uh, less than a megabyte. That's pretty good. Less than a megabyte because there's only a little image, and the rest of that um, JPEG is filled with color, which knocks the file size down quite a lot. So that's pretty good. Right then, next one. And let's close this one down. So here we've got pages six and three. So. Um, I'm thinking now. Pages six and three. It looks a bit weird for me. Right. So, so you open the booklet. So then, page after you open the booklet on the other side here, this will be page one. No, sorry, page two. So the other, uh, and page two will include track one. So therefore, page three is the one that. Um, Shows opposite that, um, and then got tracks two and three. It's really weird how it pans out, but uh, it's, if you get confused, this kind of thing when you're doing a, a booklet, it's uh, if you're doing it for the first time, especially. I mean, I've done quite a lot of CDs, I'm pretty much used to it now, but um, always do a printout first, do a printout, and then you can actually do a, a mock up. In fact, I found one the other day, a mock up that I once did, yeah. Um, I don't think they need to show it. I've got it here. It just print out a little version. I've got like a little tiny version and just make sure it all flows properly. The track names, everything else. Um, I've actually got two on my wall. That's weird. <laughs> Didn't know that. Yeah, just print it out, make sure that, uh, and then staple it together and make sure it all works out and pans out as it should. So. I mean, I might actually do a lot with this. I haven't actually, I haven't actually done it for this one um, because I'm I'm pretty much duplicating a, a template that I used before, and it has been proofread and they say it's okay, but I might still actually, as a backup, still print it out and take a look at this. So anyway, so here uh, this is uh, is it Phil or Alistair the, the twins anyway, uh, Alistair, but uh, I need to put a, fa a photograph of him somewhere. And this is the second picture of my brother Darren. Um, so again, it's just keeping in with a theme. So I'm going to duplicate this file, call this vectors, pass, turn that off. Make sure things are okay. Yep. Go here, type. Create outlines. Da, 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 da. Right, 
finals do PDF um, 2018. Let's go double check. I did actually. What's that last one I did? Yeah, pages four and five. Right. Pages four and five. I'm just thinking now. <laughs> When I duplicate it later, I did actually, yeah, I did. I just want to double check. Sometimes things just pop into my mind, and it's like, you know, better be, to be safe than sorry. So, I think everything looks fine on there. Again, that, you know, getting in touch there. This is not enough room for it with a clash in there. Yep, so I'm gonna get these vectors. I'm just gonna duplicate them. Paths. Just that entire thing. Type. Create outlines. That's looking fine. Will last turned off, yep. What's that one? Why is that there? Written by Phil. I think it's just a remnant of something. In fact, I'll delete it from this layer as well. This is why this is why I do this and go back and forth between you know, on a Mac it's command Y. You're looking at the vectors here compared to the actual image. I mean that up there doesn't actually matter. It's just uh just uh, as we say here in uh, in northern Yorkshire, it was doing my head in just being there. And so right, I'll save that. Oh no I'm not, it's turned that back off. <laughs> now I'm saving that. It's actually save. Can't see because that's dipped below for some reason. But, uh, So, save us, go into finals, do a PDF, save, PDF 2018, blah, 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 whatever, go. Yep. So, that is uh, another hole in there. Right, so they're done. Um, next thing, so, the... The booklet's now done, so I'll just create a file, call these booklet baby. Actually, why not? I'll just call it booklet. Why not all caps? In fact, let's give the printers a heads up. Eight page booklets. So the front cover is also the booklet. The tray card has got the back and the reverse, so now the only thing to do is the CD. So, the only thing I need to do now with this, so this is just, um, it's just blue. Right. So I need to look at my messages. Because they've come back to me. My brother has. Right. The only thing that's changing is on here. I need to put in all songs copyrighted by No Big Deal Music. Now, let me just think here. Outer texts. Let me just turn that off for a second. You see this one? This is a template for old CD. And 
I'm not 100% sure. I might actually use the other template I've got. So I've got the logo and... Yeah. I'm just trying to think here now. Uh, they want this copyright information on. I'm trying to think, uh, should I put it then underneath uh, the compact thing, the compact disc logo, and actually, but the only problem is, if I, if this, I, w I would like it actually to be facing the same way, if I typed it on this and then moved it all the way around it, it would be upside down, I and mean, I could do that, but um, I think they, they would prefer it and it looks better, even though it's more of a hassle. To do it the other way, so let me just look. Our texts, right? Are they? Yeah. I'm going to duplicate this layer. Outer text two. Now I might actually um, another panel. Make this just a bit larger so you can see what I've named them. Okay, let's start it again. So. I'm just going to turn that off. Uh, right. Um, is it called then? All songs copyrighted by no big deal music. Even though on his message is put in lowercase, but I don't think it will be. It looks crap in lowercase. I'm going to just keep it with a capital letter in each one. Uh, is there a space there? Yeah. I'll create an extra one. Though. I'll think of what's the spacing on this. So that's got in bold because I started off where it, where it was bold. Um, I'll just put it into semi bold. Okay. I'm just going to move this to the top a second. Now, to the untrained eye, what's going to be a second? I'll reset the bounding box so it goes back square. What the heck? Why is that coming out? Um, that would look okay, but it's not. Uh, I want these these quotes to be. Uh, I mean, that's the way you put it in text message. It wants that in actual. You want? I was going to suggest going to type and going to glyphs. Just uh, replacing these. Oh no, I've got the beach ball of death. Going to glyphs. And instead of these weird, I don't like the way that they look. There's some better ones. Where are they? Um, same thing. Oops, not very good. Um, ah, there. Just double click that. Yeah, that's what I want. See, look, a lot more uniform. There we go. I'm just thinking, actually, I might actually not the hyphens, but taking that and putting that in bold so it matches. Actually, no, no, I don't think so. It's like a copyright notice. So anyway, so I want this now um, to be on the inside of here. So I always forget how to do this. It's really awkward. Why does it keep saying that? What can I? Help? Why? Is it when I say the word why it keeps coming up? Anyway. Uh, 
And why does my computer feel like it's going on meltdown in, in the background? I think it's because... Oh yeah, because it's Capto, it's uh, quite um, memory hungry. Yeah, that's what I want. I think you need to grab one of these and drag it to the inside of... What the heck? No, wrong thing. Every single time, so I can't stand doing this. This is really buggy. It really is. And I know I was thinking I how to do it, and then it always goes wrong. It's something to do with getting one of these, and then like selecting it, and then dragging it to the inside. No, that's that's a stupid in it. No, I don't want that. No, no, I don't want that. So what I want to do is, I want to get this, and I actually want to drag it. I want this on the inside of the circle, on the other side. I think what I might do first, make it a bit easier for me. So I want this down there. Sort of around, that's central-ish. I'm just going to go to um, Object, Transform, Reset, Bounding Box, so this is nice and straight. So I want this text, you know, this way up on the inside of the circle. But for the life of me, every because I don't do this very often, um, I always forget exactly how to drag it on the inside. It's got something to do with what I what I can remember is you grab one of these handles and you you somehow drag it in on the inside. It's not that. Um, There we go. So, rather than try and move that, I'm just going to rotate this round. So, this has been set up previously as templates. I've got this, you know, if I go here, it's like bang, should be ooh, nearly central. Well, that is pretty much. There you go. And then I just want this so it's, um, so the top of this text is like, yeah, if you look there, it's meeting on both sides. So, I'll go back again. Now that's okay, and then go to Object Transform Reset Bounding Box. And the song is copyrighted by No Big Deal Music. Turn those guides off. Go here. Think that's okay. Now, there's no hole in the center because they'll just knock that off of the printers. What I do want to do is. That's out of text too. I need to move that. I need to keep that on. I can't remember what I did here. Why is that blue in the background? Why is that blue in the background? I don't want all this background on. I can't remember what I did. Wait a second. So I was going to save this. some reason so I filled that up yeah that's it so what I've done I totally forgot what I did I've just got this as a it's just a shape layer with a colour inside and I must have got some kind of layer mask going on somewhere let's see oh so that's actual guide for it template guide it's like another one that I did. Let me turn that on. Yeah, so what, what I've done is I've created a mask. So that is um that's just colour behind in, in one block. Now you can actually send it off to most printers, you know, don't quote me on this, like that to the printers. Uh, because obviously you know they're not, they're not going to print square. They're just printing the CD. 
But, you know, just for the, you know, aesthetics of it all, what I like to do is just mask it off. So I've created a shape layer here, uh, you know, the actual mask here, if I just select it and fill that with another colour like pink, you see. I've just laid that over the top to create a circle in line with the actual edges um, of the template. So let's zoom in on this. So I'm just going to make sure that's white again, and then go back. So what I want to do now before I send this CD after the printer is make sure everything lines up. That's the first thing I can see. Turn this mask off, and we go back into the outer text too. Because I flip this te text onto the inside of the line, if you look now, this line actually needs to be, big be bigger. So I've got this centralized, and that's like the dead center of the CD. I need to actually make this bigger. So I was going to keep my finger on shift, and then just roughly eyeball it, so it comes out to the edge like that. Now this this one here comes like slightly off it, so I'm going to make it slightly smaller so it's not actually touching the green line. There, so the central point can't stand, you know, the uh, things are grey and put to light red. There we go. Let's get a centre point now. I'm going to drag it to the centre. There we go. So that's now um, that's centred. So that pretty much matches that. Now on these outer texts, the first one, I think the centre point is very slightly, but not too much. So go to Object Transform, Reset Bounding Box, and I'll move this onto uh, say light blue. Go here, so it's slightly off. There we go. So we'll pause this a second when the kids are back from a bike ride. Uh, pause recording. Right, so I just made a coffee. So what was I up to? Um, yes. So I'll just realign that so that's like on the inside of the green line. Uh, that's something I might do actually in the vectors. I'll shove that down a bit so it's like in between. Oh, God, you're joking me. I think it's this Capto that's hogging up all the memory and knocking off my uh, tablet driver. That's there. I'm just thinking. A little more balanced. I think so. Take those off. Save that. Um, obviously, take those off. Get all the spacing for it all. Are they uh so just looking at these now spacing for it? So I mean it's that one. So these are obviously these are bold and these like normal. Mm. Okay, that's fine to me. Right then. One last thing that I want to do is I just want to duplicate these two, turn these two off, unlock these two. I'm just going to um, merge these text um, paths. So, the, so now I'll put all the text together to just make it simpler. I'm just going to select all those, go to type, create outlines, lock that layer. Um, command S, save it. I will drink a coffee. Just realign this so I can see the saving bar. I can't stand it when I do a file and I can't see this bar at the bottom, so it, I don't know if something stops saving or not. So, anyway, so now save as, and I go into the finals, um, and I'm just going to put new folder and um, CD print. I'll put CD print there. Just so uh, I don't have to change this, and that's like the uh, the title of the template. Um, so then go to um, 
What the heck am I doing? Adobe PDF. Save it. Oh, I've got to PDF 2018. And I think that should be it, you know. Um, so I've got CD print. That's weird. So why is that saved with I didn't turn that white thing off, did I? No. Ah. I've got the mask here as a... a I didn't realise that. See that an actual... If you look where this... Um, in fact, I thought I created that mask. Maybe that was part of the template. That's why it's in the italics. When it's in italics, it means that um, I don't think it prints anyway even if you left it on by mistake. So if I left that on by mistake, it wouldn't actually print. So it's like a template layer. Um, how do I de-template arise that one? I'm saying that, does, does it really matter? Just, um, just duplicate that a second. Turn that off. Um, I think it's in I don't know if that's shown as a template. What's a template? I'll be brutally honest here, I'm a bit stumped because I don't these when it turns it into italics, that hasn't some not something I've dealt with in a long time. That kind of person if I don't really use something. I um I forget. <laughs> I forget how to uh yeah, so that's a template when it's like that. Oh, all of a sudden it's taking it off. It must be a template then, so why was it showing up as not a template? Now I've just flipped it onto template. Yeah, and then flipped it back off. You see you see the text here, it's turned normal. So if I just save that second uh, go into save as again. Um, no, I don't want that. Finals, uh, CD print. I'll save as a PDF. So let's replace it. Um, PDF 2018. It's okay for that. Let's go here. Yeah, so it was a template. Yeah, so that, that layer, um, it was um, a template layer, so means it didn't actually show up on the final PDF, it knocks it off. But I prefer, you know, to actually... send it off like that for the pure reason that whoever's looking at it, like the, uh, when I send this off to my brother, um, the file members will be like, oh, it's a square, what's going on, is that, is that fine? <laughs> and it's like, aesthetically, I like to actually be able to look at the file and it be a circle. Although, now I've done that, I was thinking in the background, um, let me go back into Illustrator, let's make sure this circle, yeah, so it really, you don't have to knock it off, but if you see here, it's only knocked the corners off anyway, so it's not going to do anything by including this mask in the file, it just makes things a lot simpler to watch a look at, but when it's printed, it's going to print right to the edge, mask or no mask, so, that's fine. So I've got the CD printer there. That's a quick preview. Yeah. Um, I've got the tray card. Oops, I'm looking at the wrong ones. CD print. That's final file. That's only like 92 kilobytes. The I mean, that's really small. So I've got the trim marks on here anyway. That's fine. Eight page booklet. They're looking okay. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually print print these off and do a little... I'm not even going to print them full size. I just want to make sure that uh, everything's looking good. So I'm just going to um, open these. Um, I think actually if I drag them all together into preview... Where's preview? Oh, there it is. 
don't know. What the heck happened when um, hide cyber? Fuck it, I do it waking the start open them so and they all appear in the sidebar altogether. Doesn't matter. Anyway, and that was good to print. Right, I could print them off, you know, full size and make a booklet. But uh, if it was a white background, I would, but uh, I don't want it blasting on my ink. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is. Um, I'm just going to scale it. Let's have a look. 44% is what I normally do. I just want to look at the alignment and stuff. 44%, yeah, that's about good. So, it's going to. Um, That one, forty four percent. Scale that one. Yeah, so what I think I'll do is um I'll just make a little booklet out of this. And then I'll show you what I did. So to the volume on this, I just uh, printed it off. So here, just pair them together. So here's one and nine um, on the back of there, and these two. Like I say, you can you can do this full size. Actually, put it inside the CD to make sure it looks good, and then you know do that and just put them together, and make sure everything looks good. So on the it's like we had to do as well holding holding the camera, so yeah, they can see page one, and that will fold in inside so tracks two and three, and the inside. You know, four, five, six, and seven, and then, oops, finally, we got eight and nine, and then the back. All right, cool. So now well, that's done, and those files are ready. I will uh, send those off to my brother. I'll just put a little note with there for the printer saying, you know, any issues, contact me, that kind of thing. But uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I mean, there's loads of steps in there that I didn't cover, but you know, again, subscribe to my channel and I will uh, be doing loads of other projects and that kind of thing and uh, warts and all, show you my, my mistakes and also hopefully give you tips and that kind of thing um, along the way. So, thanks a lot.